We are Gold Ivy, a health company dedicated to simplifying health and wellness. Tune in as we search to find the deep, real, and raw truth. We're here to talk big, no room for small talk. It is our mission to inspire, seek growth, simplify the action steps, and build confidence. You decide what works for your daily life and how to transform our lessons into your gold. Are you ready to step into your power? Now is the time. Join us on the fearless pursuit of self-discovery and growth. This is Ivy Unleashed, a Gold Ivy production. Vulnerable story alert. This message is for any person struggling with the embarrassment of body hair and or underarm odor. I've never shared this before, so bear with me. I am a hairy person. I was teased as a kid because of my dark, hairy legs. I've always had to manage a dark upper lip or mustache as a female, and I've had to shave my armpits every single day since I was a teenager. I'm also a big sweater. I swear I sweat when I think. And recently, one of my armpits started to smell like onions anytime it sweat. See, I told you this is a very vulnerable message. But I wanted to let you know about a few services I found that have changed my life. The first is for my Minnesota peeps. If you're in Minnesota and you are interested in laser hair removal, laser skin rejuvenation, aesthetic procedures, or incredible skincare products, Envy Skin Clinic in Maple Grove and Eden Prairie are the places to be. I have basically had them remove hair from every part of my body besides my head. Talk about a vulnerable experience. But I feel so comfortable there and they make it affordable with no interest payment plans. I have saved so much time now that I am not spending hours a week shaving and I am so much more comfortable in a bathing suit not having to worry about my wild body hair everywhere. It's amazing. The laser technicians are knowledgeable, friendly, and very professional. 10 out of 10, I would recommend giving them a call or stopping in if you live in Minnesota or anywhere drivable. Their website is envyskinclinic.com to learn more about their services. And the other service is Miradry. It's a treatment for your underarms that greatly reduces sweating. I have had one treatment so far and I am a new woman. I can officially wear colored shirts without pit stains for the first time in decades and my armpits no longer smell. Mirror Dry uses thermal energy that targets and eliminates the sweat glands in your underarm. It is the only FDA cleared treatment that can dramatically reduce underarm sweat by addressing the root cause of excessive sweat and its accompanying odor, not the symptoms. So if you're like me and you have had to worry about pit stains from your sweat, excessive sweating when you're even resting, or planning your day around sweating, Miradry is your solution. I absolutely love my Miradry experience at the Eden Prairie, Minnesota location. You can find a clinic that provides Miradry all over the U.S., so head to miradry.com to see where the closest location is for you. Thank you for letting me share this vulnerable information with you. I am walking proof that these two services are life-changing. Nobody should have to be embarrassed about their bodies, period. And if you want more information, both services will be linked in the show notes, and you can also message me directly to chat more about it. Welcome back to Ivy Unleashed. Thank you so much for being here. First of all, Brooke and I just want you to know that today is all about fun, because We need more fun in our life. Everybody needs more fun in their life. And so we want to talk about why this is so important. We want to talk about what we do to incorporate fun into our routine. And we want you to think about how you can have more fun. Who doesn't want more fun? I do. Yeah. And we did. Yeah. We are prioritizing fun right now more than ever because we are juggling a lot of things. And we know that feeling good is our top priority. If we're not feeling good, our output isn't as great. And life just isn't as great. Yeah. When I think about fun, I think about vibes, Mm -hmm. right? Like when you're in a room with someone that's fun or like full of energy, you're drawn to them. You want more of it. Like we all do. Even if you think sometimes people are a little over the top, (laughs) you know, it's like the over the top person sometimes, as long as they're not just like being a show off or like starving for attention, they really just have that good energy we all want. We're like drawn to that. Yeah. Energy is contagious. Mm -hmm. And it's also like momentum. It's a habit. And so how are you spending your time? 
are you intentionally scheduling things that you like to do and that bring you joy and that make you laugh? And we're going to get into why that's important, what we did about it, because we're like, all right, we got to do something. Mm -hmm. And we decided to grab a pole (laughs) and learn how to pole dance. And let me tell you, it is a sport. Oh, I am bruised. I am sore. It's like acrobatic, I think. I don't know if that's the right term. Yeah, I mean, people, when you think of pole dancing, you know, there's the story attached to it you have. Some it's negative, some it's too sexual, sometimes it's this, it's that. I mean, whatever you think in your mind. But our experience was very different. You know, it even may look to you, if you saw reels or TikToks on pole dancing, it might look sexual. But when you're in it, it's just movement Mm -hmm. and strength and you know, moving your body in a way you haven't before. And I think the biggest piece and something that our instructor did was she started us off with an affirmation that was like letting go of judgment of yourself and of others. And I think that's so important with fun because that's what blocks us from having fun. We wonder, like we think about how we look and Mm -hmm. we think about how others look or you compare yourself or you, you just overthink. How are other people perceiving me? Mm -hmm. When really people just care about themselves. Yeah. And just like away from pole dancing for a second. (laughs) If you think about anytime you have a social situation and you're going into it, right? You're thinking about what you're wearing, who's going to be there, what you're bringing, what people will think of you. And that just blocks your ability to have fun and let loose. And if you think about what you really want out of a social event, you want to have some fun, Mm -hmm. right? Like, and I think the more that we can just accept others, accept ourselves and kind of just let go of all of the overthinking, which is, it's, it can be challenging, right? But it's a practice of, I'm really going to just try and enjoy Mm -hmm. myself and my time. And that's too on being present Mm -hmm. and why the work of meditation and breath work is so important so that you can just sit and or stand and be where your feet are and not have all of these ruminating thoughts of, oh gosh, what are people thinking? What do I look like? Cause you can fully be in your body. And when you experience that, like there's nothing more beautiful of, okay. And feeling the way that your body moves and how strong you are, like getting back to pole dancing, mm-hmm. the upper body strength that it takes. Like <laughs> I did not have that. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to work on the this. core, the core, if you lift yourself on the pool. That's, yes. that's where I'm sore is like through my side of my body and side of my core, my obliques and my like armpits sore. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I think, I mean, she showed us what it could look like, mm-hmm. but I think, you know, Brooke and I were like, let's just let loose. And we took videos of each other because we're like, the best part of this will actually be when we mess up because it will be funny and we can just laugh it off. And me eating shit from (laughs) the top of the pole to the ground. And she's like, you're not just supposed to let go of the pole and fall. (laughs) Oh, that probably would feel a lot better. I like flipped upside down and I just stayed there. I just stayed there (laughs) because I didn't know what to do. I was like, oh, she's like, yep, slowly release your hands. Like, oh, okay. That's how this, (laughs) how do I get down? (laughs) It's like, you're not a bat. Like, what are you doing? (laughs) But it was so nice to also have the expectation of we're not going to be great at this Mm -hmm. and that's okay. And along with just having fun, I think sometimes, you know, you think about how to spice up your marriage or like you have a friend that, you know, sometimes you lose touch or haven't seen each other in a while. Doing something new together, it was so fun and such a bonding experience Mm -hmm. with you. Who's looking for a way to connect more with their partners? I'm pretty sure everyone is. Good point. We are so excited to tell you about the cutest and most perfect way to keep the spark alive with your significant other. Meet Cute Box is a themed date night box filled with unique items from small businesses around the world. In 2020, a married couple and the creators of Meet Cute, Brenda and Tony, decided to create an experience to help couples actively engage with each other and support small businesses during the pandemic. And after getting our very own boxes, we can tell you Meet Cute subscription boxes are perfectly personalized and we loved using our items for a date night in. Every box is handmade based on your membership profile. So you and your partner have a new surprise each month. In my profile, I mentioned our love of movies and got the cutest movie genre cube. My boyfriend Ian and I love different types of movies, so I can't express how perfect this is. I also got an energy healing kit with Sage that I am so excited to use for my new condo and the best smelling candle to light after to give me the coziest fall vibes. 
head over to our socials to see what else came in my box. Let's just say Tony and Brenda did their research. And mine was themed around a wine night by the fire. Such a fun and intimate way to keep our spark alive. There were other fun items based on my preferences like a candle, coffee, and treats too. It's also a great gift idea for others to disconnect from the world and connect with each other. Memberships start at only $29.99 with each box valued up to $100 and there's even gift boxes available if you want to send one to a friend. So if you're looking for ways to keep date nights fun and exciting, as well as support small local businesses, you can try Meet Cute Box risk-free by visiting meetcutebox.com and use the code GOLD, G-O-L-D, for $5 off your first box. But hurry, the discount expires October 31st of 2022. We can't wait for our next Meet Cute Box and a fun new date night. Each box is made for love, with love. And who couldn't use more of that? I was telling Brooke when we left, I'm like, I'm so glad that we did this together because we do a lot of things together, but it's nice to laugh Mm -hmm. together and try something new, like, Brooke is in her sports bra spinning on this pool. I'm like, where are we in the world? (laughs) And like, just to set the stage for you guys, the the scenery that was around us, because it was impeccable. And if if you haven't already watched, go watch the videos, the reels and the TikToks that we posted, because you'll see what the room looked like. But it was part of her house. We drove an hour on a Saturday morning to go pole dance. And it was great. To the middle of nowhere. At a farm in Amory, Wisconsin. (laughs) Yeah. And this room, this house was amazing. It was huge, but the whole front room was blocked off and it was bright purple with hot pink feather boas hanging. She also loved cats. And so there was like cat crazy decor all over that was vibrant. She had these like fake decor that was food. Oh yeah. So eclectic. It was great. And then just these four giant poles in the middle, mirrors all around. We got a disco ball. And I think what, made the experience what it was was on the way there it was almost like a mindset shift of let's just fully go in (laughs) I was telling Brooke I'm like I am committed to fully trying to do my best on this pull and not like my best and like I have to do it perfectly but like I'm gonna give it my all like I'm gonna really try and see what I can do here and just like if I fall I fall if I suck at it whatever but I'm just gonna try and see I think embracing the experience of what it is. And I loved how she started off of like, let go of any judgment. Mm -hmm. If you let go of that, you know, when you're in a room of people or you're trying something new, just letting it be what it is, you know, look at someone, like you said, being present in their eyes and like really hearing what they're saying, letting go of the judgment of what their hair looks like, or is that how I would handle a situation? Mm -hmm. Like just letting people be who they are, accepting who they are. And finding the joy and humor in the moments of whether you're, you're laughing about a circumstance or yourself or a funny story. I don't know. I think kind of having that mindset shift of letting go of what you think your expectations. Yeah. Yeah. Like letting go of the shoulds of, I think with that, for me, like I am very competitive and I love to be great at things. I just do. And I was not great at pole dancing, (laughs) right? So going into it, knowing like, I'm probably going to suck, but I can still have fun with it and I can still groove and I can still like pretend I'm a monkey and like climb up this pole. And if I want to, you know, let loose and feel like the sensuality of it, of flipping your hair and just like fully embracing your body fullness. Mm -hmm. Like we've had Dr. Rachel Allen on to talk about and Cynthia there's a lot of shame tied around pole dancing. And for us, it was just to let loose, but also yes, to get out of our comfort zone because we've never pole danced before. And also (laughs) it's literally just a pole. And I think you have these stories tied to it Mm -hmm. and this judgment tied to it. And like, Ooh, that's this or that's that. It's literally just a (laughs) pole and you're using your body to do whatever you want with it. Like we're not We weren't doing anything but just trying to have fun. Yeah, yeah. And I think something you brought up was competition. And i that's a part of fun for people. And me too. I was thinking about fun and 
what do I think is fun? Because it's different for everyone, Mm -hmm. right? And I think it is where you can kind of get lost in the moment, like just like joy, right? Like you're just, you have this feeling and there's laughter or there's just this rush of energy and high vibes. And a big part of that for me is competition. Mm -hmm. And for us, we went into it with a friendly competition, put a poll on Instagram, like who's going to be better on the poll? And that was just for fun. But I also think it shows part of like, the maturity of our relationship and how much love we have mm-hmm. where, yeah, we said that. And we were like, who is better? And there were times Brooks like, Oh, looks like you're doing better on this poll than I am. Right. And then she was super sensual and great, but I feel like it's, it was like a friendly competition mm-hmm. and lots of love because when she would do something cool or I would do something cool, we're like, okay, you yeah. know? And so I think if that's something that, you know, back in the day, if you were really into sports and you've kind of gotten away from it. That is kind of a loss. You mm-hmm. know, if you were, like for me, I was an athlete in high school. And when I went to college, I had to make the decision, do I run cross country or do I just have this experience with college? And I was like, I want to just be known for who I am and not sports anymore. But then I lost that competitive mm-hmm. experience I had on a regular basis with all the sports I played. And so I found it back with marathoning. But something I was thinking about is, you know, if that was fun for you and you don't have it anymore because you now you're a mom or you're in the workforce and you're like, I used to love team sports or mm-hmm. I used to love competing with people, play into that. Like, how could you bring that into your routine? You know, whether it's like with your smartwatch and competing with other people or if it's joining some type of sports league or whatever it may be. Sometimes competition is part of fun for people. Yeah. I think when I refer to competition, what I meant specifically earlier was not being afraid to do it because you know you're going to suck. Mm. Like embracing this idea of trying something new, of getting out of your comfort zone and not tying yourself to the expectation of what it should be like. Mm -hmm. But yes, competition is good. It's friendly if you're having fun with it. Mm -hmm. But if it becomes a chore or I have to win or I'm not doing it, then maybe think about what or I have doing. to perfect this. If yes. I'm not perfect at it, I, yeah. yeah. If you're, I think that takes, judgment. yeah. And that takes the joy away from it. And when we were talking earlier about, okay, what do we really want to talk about within this episode? The comfort zone was a big piece because a lot of times when you think about comfort zone, you think, you know, get into the uncomfortableness of things and there's no growth in the comfort zone. And it's kind of like do hard things And we believe that you can do fun things and Mm -hmm. still grow. Like Mm -hmm. you can get out of your comfort zone to enjoy and to have fun. And that also in return still builds confidence Mm -hmm. because you're enjoying what you're doing and you're not so much in your head. Yeah. You're experiencing it. You're in your body. You're trying something new. You're getting a new perspective and a new outlook and you're growing while you're having fun. And I think too, with fun, it doesn't need to have this limit on it. I think Mm -hmm. sometimes we think we can only experience so much fun and then we got to get back to, you know, real life or whatever, where with fun, I think if the more open you are to trying new things that might be out of your comfort zone, it might not be hard to Mm -hmm. have fun, right? Mm -hmm. It might just be being open to more fun or a new experience or a new way of thinking, right? Like when you hear the word sensuality or sexuality or pole dancing or whatever, you have this judgment that may overshadow how much fun you could have doing something like that. Not that that has to be what you're Mm -hmm. doing, but with anything, like you might have this story you tell yourself about a certain activity, so you don't try it. But then also you might have this like longing to just try it and see, you know, Mm -hmm. I think for me owning sensuality and sexuality is I have these stories of like, is this okay? Like, is this bad? You Mm -hmm. know? And it wasn't, it was like, nothing sexual about it. It was just actually more, Oh, I realized how strong I am. Mm -hmm. Like I can whip myself up on this pole upside down. I'm glad I've been strength training. This was so much fun. And then the video back, I'm like, Oh, it looks a little bit more sexual than it felt in the moment. I'm like, damn. Yeah. And I think it's a practice too, right? Like we talk about meditation and being present, like that's a practice. But the more that you schedule these things in your calendar to have fun, I think the more you can tap into that energy, into that vibe, and you can find it throughout your day. So for me right now, I'm doing a new protocol with my gut for SIBO, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, and I'm experiencing die off and all of these things as I heal. And it's been a really challenging time for me. And so mentally and physically, it was really important that we do this. Like last week was really rough. And so Saturday, like 
I wasn't looking forward to this because it was work, but I knew I needed it. And so I think it can be that shift too of, I know this is going to be good for me. And I know this is going to bring me the joy that I need. So if you're struggling mentally or physically, just with your health, like knowing that laughter and having fun is medicine. Mm -hmm. It is a part of feeling good and your wellness because we can get super scientific, but the gist of it is if you are stressed, if you mentally are struggling, most likely you're in fight or flight nervous system. And when you're in that nervous system, your body can't heal. When you're having fun, you're switching over to that parasympathetic nervous system, that rest and digest, you're calm. Everything just feels a little easier and you can breathe. When you're in that nervous system, your body can heal. It can give oxygen in the blood to the organs that it needs to heal. And so for me, like this was a part of healing. Mm -hmm. And so looking at having fun as productive, what also comes to mind is things that don't need to involve alcohol. Mm. We have been talking a lot about this, how our society, it normalizes alcohol and there's a lot of quote unquote fun wrapped around with alcohol because you can relax and you can have fun. So for me and my healing journey, it's finding things that I really enjoy doing that I don't need to drink. Mm -hmm. And it, it's physical activities or it's relaxing, it's reading, it's movies. So when you think of fun, if like your definition is partying, like that's fine. But I also invite you to think like, where can you be fully present in the moment and also mentally be there? Right. Well, and I think the whole idea uh, too of this is to naturally release more serotonin, yes. which makes you happy. So serotonin is what we talk about a lot where you want to stimulate this to release in your body because you will feel happy naturally without anything that's going to give you a hangover mm -hmm. <laughs> or have negative health impacts for you. And so that's super important. So that, you know, like Brooke said, laughter is medicine. It's attributed to the brain's release of serotonin, oxytocin, and other feel good chemicals. So when you're laughing, when you're watching a movie or you call a friend that makes you laugh, you are actually like within your body, releasing hormones that are going to naturally make you feel better that are long lasting. And then, like you said, it's this practice of when you are low thinking of those things that can actually produce that mm -hmm. in your body. And then, you know, maybe you make a list of them that you can come back to on those days you are feeling really low and you do need a reminder of what makes you happy. Cause it's just tougher to come up with it when you're in that space. Yeah. And it's the more you do it, the more you'll feel it, right? So if you can prioritize laughing daily, like whether that's a funny video or something so simple that doesn't add on a lot of time, but it just gives you that boost of serotonin, of oxytocin, that's going to help you feel good for longer. And it's telling your brain, hey, we like this. Like, let's mm -hmm. keep this going. So it's a huge piece of healing is laughing and feeling good. And there's been so many studies done of people that have healed just through prioritizing laughing, which is wild. Mm -hmm. So a lot of studies around it and science behind it. And so if you can't find the time to schedule in these big things for fun, like, the point is it doesn't have to be a huge extravagant event. Like we drove an hour, we made a morning out of it. It was awesome. But you can also find fun in the simple things throughout your day. Yeah. And something that's really important for Brooke and I, and you'll see if you follow us, whether it's on Instagram or TikTok, is that we weave fun into these videos where some of them have nothing to do with your mindset and motivation <laughs> and inspiration. It's like, let's just make the people laugh. We because, need some energy too. Yeah. And what's so funny is a lot of times, like I would say at least 75% of the times, the videos that really go wild, like our yeet skirt on TikTok, <laughs> when it was like one of our first viral ones was like literally just me throwing my hair up and down and us being goofy because- People want that weaved into their life. Mm -hmm. And so if you do follow us on either of those platforms, you will see the stuff, like there's some videos that literally make no sense. And most of the time it's just us moving our bodies. It's the dancing. It's the letting loose. It's when you can feel our high vibes and energy because that's what the people want. Mm -hmm. They want something that makes them laugh. And what feels better than just having a laugh, like an unexpected laugh, <laughs> like yeah. you don't see it coming. <laughs> yeah. And who doesn't want to have more fun, feel better, I think something I'm thinking about right now in this healing journey a lot is how short life is. And like, I do not want to spend another day feeling miserable. So like, what do I need to do to snap out of it? What do I need to prioritize? Because there's a lot of things going on that I can't control as far as like the supplements I'm taking and the things they're doing to my body. But there's also a lot of things I can control. And so what am I focusing on? What am I doing to move me more to how I want to feel? And fun is a big component of that. So mm -hmm. if you 
aren't liking the way your life is going right now, what are you doing intentionally each day to bring joy into your life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with life is short, when we had Dale DeSeno on, he was talking about how a lot of people in the cancer community, when they meet together, they talk about how they're incorporating fun into their routine and how they're kind of going back into their past. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about when I was a kid, you know, before your brain's fully developed and you're overthinking things and have anxiety and responsibilities, you are able to just do things that you gravitate towards that are fun for you. And you don't care if it's weird to everybody else because you're just in the moment Mm -hmm. because you haven't learned how to like second guess yourself yet, you know? And so I think it's important to think about your past. You know, when I was a kid, what did I love to do? You know, for me, it was sports. For me, it was reading. For me, it was like actually some alone time. And I'm like, Ooh, I've really gotten away from that. Mm -hmm. I do actually like being alone sometimes and having that, like, I don't have this rush to do something else. I just like, you said, hang out my room alone a lot and like read or organize and like those types of things was like jamming to music and doing that was like fun for me it's always been dance you know I love when people have weddings and I have an excuse to just get lost on a dance floor and so it's something that I weave into my kids life now it's like you know vibes are low in this house right now we're putting on a fun song Mm -hmm. or it's the morning someone's crabby what song do you want to hear let's dance it out and so I think Think about that. Back in the day, what did you do that you got lost in? Did you go roller skating with your friends? Did you jam out to certain songs? Play them again. You mm-hmm. like those memories will come back. Those feel good feelings from that song will come back. You can feel it in your body, dance it out. And so then it's, you know, what do I experience fun? Like what makes sense right now for me? So if I have three kids, what could I do with them? I could take them roller skating which I really want to do. So why are I, you looking at me? Oh, like I have to come with. You should come with. That kind of makes me nervous. Cause one time in college, this boy that I liked, he was running and I was rollerblading and I totally just ate it. <laughs> and I haven't rollerbladed since. Oh, we got to get you back on there. <laughs> Scary. Yeah. I can do hard things. You can. Well then also like now in your life, like you said, in your calendar, present day, where, what could you do with the time that you have, the job that you have? How could you make your job more fun? Like in between your client calls, could you put on a song and, and dance it out? You know, could you call a friend over your lunch or go for a run that brings you joy? It's fun for you. Gets your vibes up. Mm-hmm. Like what could you do with the time that you have to make things fun? And then I think in the future, looking forward, taking the audit of your time and thinking about, okay, that's what I used to do. This is what I feel like I can do now. How can my future self, my future calendar look a little different? What could kind of give or take, or how could we weave in more fun into these moments where I may feel like my time's limited, but I could make that more fun. Or I could go into that experience a little less judgmental of myself and others to be able to have fun. It could even be in your car. Let's make this car ride more fun. Let's laugh more how can Mm -hmm. we create that vibe for my life my kids life my future self I mean it's going to improve your health and well-being the longevity of your life it's really important to weave this in yeah and if you want that serotonin boost like some good ways that you already mentioned dancing singing moving your body because what that's doing is changing your biochemistry But also for some people, it's watching a scary movie. It's having a conversation with a loved one. So it looks different for everyone. And Andrew and I hope that through listening to this episode, you make some serious progress on getting fun scheduled into your life. And if it already is, we love it. And we want to know what you're doing, what brings you joy. So send us a message, comment on our posts. We want to engage with you guys and know what you love doing and also what you want to hear more of on the show. Mm Mm-hmm. And we want to have more fun. So us hearing how you're having fun will bring us more joy. And then maybe if you have some different things we could try that we haven't done before, I'm into trying new things. Well, your mom said, what, roller derby? And I was like, (laughs) oh, I don't know. (laughs) That's aerial yoga is on the list. What else do we have on the list? Aerial yoga. I want to do some roller skating. I don't know. We tried kickboxing. That was super fun with Dale. A lot of movement things. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, can we go to a spa? Ooh. I'll go in a sauna, get a nice massage. Yep. That's fun. See, all different kind of things. 
All right, and now it's time for our three gold stars. Number one, schedule something fun into your calendar at least once a week. Number two, try a new activity with a friend that gets you out of your comfort zone. And three, write a list of all the things that bring you joy. Audit your calendar to see how often you're making time for those things. And now for your piece of gold. Today's gold comes from Martha Beck, and she says, having fun is not a diversion from a successful life. It is the pathway to it. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen to your truth and go chase your golds.